First, uh, first one here, it says, I was watching this video and this person claimed when Moses wrote Exodus 2014, he had two wives. He also goes further and says that adultery only includes another man's wife and God never called David out for having seven wives. God only called him out when he took another man's wife. This person used 2 Samuel 12, 8 to say that God, God gave David all his wives and he would have given him more. I agree with you guys that God's intention is monogamy. We just have wolves in sheep's clothing that take the Bible out of context. So I'm trying to rebuke the scriptures and ex rebuke with the scriptures and ex and explanation. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I can't. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, let's look at this Exodus 20. I've never heard of Moses having two wives. Yeah, I've never heard of that either. Uh, oh, oh, that's just it. Exodus 20, 14 says, yeah, thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, so Moses like, wrote, thou shalt not have to commit, commit adultery. Nowhere in the Bible, as far as I know, does it say Moses had two wives. It only talks about one wife. Um, and she's named, I'm blanking on her name. Um, Zipporah. Zipporah, that's right. So mm -hmm. Bible only talks about Zipporah, and she does come up multiple times. Mm -hmm. And always mm -hmm. and only Zipporah. Yep. So where there's probably two, maybe that's a Talmudic tradition that it, I've just am blown away when I hear about the ways that the more Talmudic based rabbis have totally different stories and understandings of what's there in the Bible. Like I saw one rabbi who, uh, when it comes to the, the story of the golden calf, you know, we're, we're told about how, how, everybody came to Aaron, please make us a golden calf. And then he forged it and made it for them. Uh, and then Aaron turns around and says, when Moses comes down, he's like, what happened? And Aaron says, oh, well, I, I just put it in. And then it just like came out of, I put the gold in and out came this, this uh, statue all by itself. Well, the Talmudic people say, well, look, that's the true version. That's what really happened. <laughs> The Bible's clear. That's Aaron trying to cover for himself, just saying, "Oh, it just made it so." Um, so, yeah, I, I'm I'm really skeptical there about the two wives for Moses. But that aside, it is a fact. David had multiple wives. Uh, you know, he had the first one was Mike Michal from Saul. Then he married Abigail, who actually was another man's wife, but he died before uh, before David decided to marry Abigail. And then he continued to add wives and had many concubines as well. Um, uh, yes. He, he, yeah. Cause we, he had many concubines because we know that then when his son Absalom, I think it was, yeah, Absalom tried to take over. David got kicked out, but left his concubines in the palace and Absalom slept with all the cat, con all the concubines. So David had many, many women and yeah, God didn't specifically call him out on any of those things. He only called him out on, the killing Uriah to get Bathsheba, which, yeah, that that was a terrible sin in many ways, right? An innocent man was killed, and then God, and, and David actually raped Bathsheba too, even though it wasn't forced as we know it. By his position, David basically forced her to sleep with him. So it was grievous in many ways. And Uriah was alive at the time he did that. Uh, so yeah, God has a, almost at times like a ranking of sins. So to yeah, take another man's wife is worse than, than uh, just having two wives. Uh, and having, having two wives, let's say, is better than just being promiscuous and not having... Um, marriage entered into a marriage contract so I, I don't want to say though that you know some sin isn't bad all sin is bad and as we've said before every single time the bible has someone having multiple wives the family is an absolute mess mm -hmm. and you look at david's family look at what's going on in there and i just mentioned absalom kicked david out and was causing big problems and and that's because of how he saw David as a king and how David was having many wives and not, not respecting the life of Uriah and others. So it came back in the form of David's kids being bad, killing each other, raping each other. And he started now a generational trend of sin within his family. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's terrible and it's not God's plan.
No. And I think it also speaks to God's patience and in meeting people where they are that, you know, everybody has sin in their life because this is such a sinful, broken world and we are born, basically born into it. So, but to try to change everything in a, you know, in a second until sin is completely destroyed is really not, not practical. God is patient. He's long suffering. He wants us to come to his his perfect true path the way he created us to work the way he created society to work and you know but we're all running astray and so god he, baby steps us he's ba yeah he's baby stepping and meeting people where they are yeah and if you understand the culture in david's time for one <laughs> for one <laughs> is that you know back then um you know women didn't have the rights that they do. They didn't have the ability to, you know, provide for themselves like they do now. Um, and so as much as, you know, it wasn't God's plan, and I'll show you that biblically in just a second, um, it wasn't God's plan for, you know, for polygamy to ever to happen. But, you know, like you're saying, it's at least if, you know, multiple wives were married to one man and he was providing for them, then at least they were cared for instead of just, you know, slept with and thrown out like they were, that's all they were good for. And so basically, um, you know, it's, it wasn't the right, it wasn't the right thing. It wasn't God's plan. It was never God's ideal, but you know, God is trying to, like you're saying, work with us and get us back, you know, as humanity back to where we ought to be. And that's where Jesus comes in. And Jesus made it very, very clear beyond any shadow of a doubt that it's one man and one wife. And I'll show you right now in the book of Matthew chapter 19. And so, um, you know, G the Pharisees in Jesus' time were always coming to him, you know, trying to question him and make him, you know, falter. And in verse, in Matthew chapter 19, verse three, says the Pharisees also came to him, testing him and saying to him, Jesus, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And in verse four, and he, Jesus answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them in the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two, not more than two, the two, one, one man, one woman, two shall become one flesh and says, and then they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate, period. And so you cannot tell me with any shadow of a doubt that it was ever God's plan or blessing for anyone to have more than one spouse, whether it's a wife with multiple husbands or a husband with multiple wives, either way, it's not God's plan. Um, as you see in the book of Genesis at the creation period, and Jesus reiterates that um, when he comes to basically bring things back to order, which is why we have the New Testament, like the Old Testament, you see, you know, Genesis one, this is perfection. This is God's will. Um, you know, that nobody would hurt each other. Everybody would obey and love each other. That's God's plan. Sin entered and you see the world fall apart for 4,000 years until we're basically at the lowest point in humanity we can be. And Jesus comes into the picture and he tries to set things right. And he, and the changes he brings about were radical for his time even. And they're continue to be radical today because Jesus's message of love your enemies and you know love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself is still a radical thing because nobody does that unless they are moved and, and empowered by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which Jesus came to give us after his sacrifice so we can have access to salvation. So um, I hope that helps you, Robert, a bit. And um, yeah, please know <laughs> there is no grounds biblically for, for polygamy. It's just, you know, a, a temporary thing that happened in Earth's history, but it was never a good thing. And when it began was after um, Cain. It wasn't Cain or his son was the first polygamist. And it was just the line of the seed of Satan. It was never a, a good option. Um, good point. In Genesis, uh, I believe, chapter five, if I'm not mistaken, talking about, um, you know, basically the lineage of Seth, who was God's people, and then the lineage of Cain, who were, you know, the, the seed of Satan, basically, um, who brought about the flood because they were so wicked and the, the thoughts of their heart were only wicked and evil continually. So, it was uh, Genesis 419. It was Cain's grandson, Lamech. So not yes. to be confused Lamech. with the Lamech, Noah's father Lamech. Yes. It's um yeah, this 
Cain's grandson Lamech, it says, and Lamech took unto him two wives, in the name of Ada and the name of the other Zillah. Yeah, and he was he did other bad stuff too, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't he also a murderer? Or so? he had, and then he did that. He did something terrible. He's like, a, you know, if Cain yeah, he was, murdered murdered a young man, and then said, well, if if Cain would be avenged but seven times, then let someone who uh, let me be avenged 77, 70 times seven times. Yeah, he was interesting, interesting fellow. So, yeah, just yeah. never, when the family is messed up, things get messed up, society gets messed up. So, you know, it, obviously that's why God gave us an example in the beginning of what his perfect will is, which, you know, leads to a more peaceful and in a healthy relationship. So... Thank you.